I guess this is a bit of a spoiler for the beginning of the video, but as you can see, both the batteries are already installed behind me. I'm going to show you the steps I took to install these two EG4 wall mount batteries and hook them up to the system. So before I show the install, I'll talk about the specs on these batteries. Actually, in my last video, I opened one up, so I'll tag that in the video here so you guys can check that out if you haven't already. These are 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, all in an outdoor rated case. There is internal heaters in these also. So if they're outdoors and the temperature dips too low, the heaters will automatically turn on. They can charge and discharge at 200 amps. And I'll talk about it later in the video, but they are designed to link together. So you can send one run into the inverter and have up to three linked together to send to that specific inverter. So now I'll show you guys some of the install, starting with the concrete I put in here underneath the batteries. So while the concrete's setting up, I am putting the Unistrut up on the wall. And the reason I'm putting the Unistrut on it First of all, it's pretty obvious, but I have a metal building here. Um, and the studs are five foot center. So I wanted something to string in between the studs that the mounting bracket can sit on. Now I do have the footing down below that really, everything's gonna be just resting on the footing, but this will add a little extra stability here. So the mounting bracket is gonna sit like this. The first battery is gonna be about right there or so. I'll have bolts in the unistrut holding the bracket up. And I'll have another unistrut right down here. So I slice them to size, you guys probably saw that. And now I'm mounting them. So I'm not actually on a stud on here. I have a stud in the center over there and then one at the far end. But here I was fortunate, I have a wooden stud, all the framing I did inside to get ready for the 18 kPV. So I'm gonna be using a wood screw. I've already uh, drilled through the metal. So I'm gonna be using wood screws on this one only, but all the rest of them will be metal cutting. So I'm nearly there. It's almost time to pop the forms off here and I can rub the base, make everything smooth on that. And the Unistrut is up. While I was waiting for this to dry, I put the Unistrut up. I do have to get some washers for these though. And I'm putting a little bit of rubber behind there where I put the screw through. And then uh, the next step will be when this is cured, to put the, well, I can put the back plates on now and then I can set these two. The third's gonna go over there whenever I get that. And I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with these. If you saw my Unistrut array that I built, you'll know what these are. But these slide inside the Unistrut and it provides a bolt. And the spring actually pushes back against the Unistrut so you can tighten a bolt there. So I'm gonna get some bolts and washers to mount the plates on there. I don't have any yet, but I've got these. So I need four of these per thing, and I'm gonna get the bolts and washers to hold the plates on here and here. All right, so I'm bolting the plate, the first plate up to the Unistrut, and it doesn't work. I didn't think it would as I was measuring things. I would have to move all of this up a little bit because this one here is hitting the seam in the metal down here. So it's not lining up with these. So I could drill new holes, but really, I mean, this is just, I guess just to firm things up. I don't know what's gonna jerk these batteries off the wall to begin with, but these are bolted in nicely. Everything's really firm. So I'm gonna get started here. I needed this one anyway, either way to, for a spacer behind there because this is spacing it out both ways. So I'm gonna lift the battery up here in just a minute and put it on the first plate and see how well it goes. Down. 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 Okay. It's on there now. Man, that is exciting. You plan for something 
and you hope it works. And when it actually does, it's sort of surprising. <laughs> so both of these are in. I've got, uh, I don't think I talked about it yet, but I've got the wireways that come for the top of these. I'm going to do three of those instead. So reason being, well, there's actually a couple reasons, long story, but the quote I got on the wireway that I was going to put here was actually incorrect. So the one that I wanted for this was actually going to be more expensive than just getting the separate wireways. Plus they have, uh, well, I haven't seen them yet, but I think they have little grommets and everything to go in here. So when you add all that up and then you have to kind of retrofit it, but the other ones are made to go on top of this. So it was going to be easier and I'm going to have a piece of conduit in between each to run the cables through. This is going to be the master and each one is going to run to this first and then through that. So the bus bars in these are going to support all three and then run into the inverter in there. Anyway, that is exciting. So next step tomorrow, the wireways get here, hopefully, and I start putting all the cables cabling on. So I mentioned before I couldn't or didn't want to get that wireway, the whole piece that I was going to get before. So I just ended up ordering these. The full piece would have been close to eight feet. They didn't have a seven foot like I was wanting. So eight foot, it was just too large. And then the price was just, uh, yeah, it was out of this world <laughs> at the place local to me. So I got these wireways that Signature Solar has instead. So these are actually made for the 6K there, the 6000 XP. And you can also, it's for the 18K PV also. So these are different uh, knockouts for those. And I'll show you what they come with here in a minute. They're pretty neat. They actually have a, um, so there's a waterproof seal around the door. And they come with a set of keys. And then actually I'll open up the other box and show you guys that way. I just don't show you scattered parts that came with it. <laughs> All right. So inside the wire trough that they give you the, here's the bottom is open because this actually sits on the power pro battery. So you're looking at it from the bottom. They come with these and Amazon actually has a couple different names for these firewall grommets is one of them, but these are massive. Um, and they, they tension down. So they ratchet down, and you can put these through the side of the walls here. Um, so I think these are two or, yeah, they look like two inch. And then they have a smaller set also. So these can go either through the side or they can go through the top. And then they also have these, which are non-tensioning. So these can pop in place there and you can just feed your wire through. That way nothing frays come with a set of keys. There's stainless steel bolts that go into the top sections here. And then these are the caps you probably saw on the other one already. So what you're not going to use, um, if assuming you're doing something like me, these fill up, fill, fill the holes and make them waterproof on the top. This is the center battery right here. And this is going to be the master. The one on the left over here is going to feed to this. And I'll show you the parallel cables as I go along. But this is the one that's going to go I'm going to go through somewhere around right here and it will go down into the trough there because it's the easiest method for right now into my wire trough inside. All right, we're through. You can actually see the battery cables in the back of my DIY cabinet in there. Don't worry, the battery cables are way far away from the wall. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so this is like I was measuring here. This isn't going to work. I could have made it a little higher, but this is going to work better for me, I think. I had one of these, so I'm going to come in there and just make a short piece for right here to go into the wireway. So this is the 1,000 amp. Victron shunt. It's really neat. I haven't seen this one before. I mean, I've seen it online, but I have the 500 amp. So this has three points of contact here. You can put a lug there and there, and there's a through bolt right here. And they actually make a 2000 amp. So that thing must be huge. But And I think it has multiple lugs on it too. But maybe I've been thinking about this wrong. So I've got the two negative leads in the back. I'm going to put them on this side 
and then the other side here will just go right over here to the negative bus bar. But maybe, looks like a mosquito. Maybe uh, if these batteries self-consume, I don't know, maybe I won't even get a reading on it. What are your thoughts? You guys can tell me in the comments, but it could be if I shut all the other loads off and then I see how much it's drawing, if I've got some batteries inside, then I can see how much the heaters are drawing. Otherwise, I don't know if the, the uh, shunt here is going to show much, but I'm already set up for it. So I'm going to hook it up here in just a few minutes. All right, so the shunt's all hooked up. I've got power to it over here. I've got the covers back on the bus bars. I think that's the last thing I need to do. I retorqued or checked all the torque on all of the other lugs that I had done in the past, which is always good practice if you're in your wireway. So I think that's the last thing I need to do in this wireway. So I'm going to close this one up and uh, put that second one on the second battery now. I'm not sure how it looks when you guys are nearly finished with a project, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> it seems like every time I do anything, there's stuff absolutely everywhere. I just wanted to show you here. So I did get the conduit run and I've got the comms cable going in there between the batteries. And that comes in the parallel kit. So the parallel kit, I just wanted to show you that it comes with two of the Amphenol connectors on it. So, a little leaf or something on there? Yeah, okay. So this would hook up to this battery, obviously, and then it goes under there. If you guys saw my teardown video, these come with bus bars on them just for that purpose. So this battery is actually going to go and feed the bus bar into this battery, and the double that I ran inside is going to take the load. So it's actually a pretty neat design. That's why when I get the money together, when I get the third one over here, that's gonna do the same exact thing and feed into the bus bar. Because it has, let me show you here. It has four different connections. These are already going to the inside. This battery on my left is gonna feed this one because the all it needs is one wire because that can handle the load from one battery. And then the other battery will feed this one here. So it's a really neat design. You can have three different batteries hooked into one and headed inside. Yeah, that's basically just push and click. So that's finished. But I thought about mentioning also, since I talked about the bus bars on these batteries, that works because you're feeding one inverter. So I'm feeding the 18 kPV and it can't pull more than these will supply through these wires here. If you were gonna supply, so I'm, I'm supplying that main bus bar system, but I only have the one inverter on there. If you were gonna have two 18 kPVs, you wouldn't wanna have three batteries hooked up to like a main bus bar and be sending all that current through just these you'd be pulling too much. So the reason this works, it's designed to work through one inverter. And you could always feed one battery directly to one of the other inverters. So there's a lot of different, uh, I put a picture up on the teardown video. There's there's different ways to uh, put these. You could have, if you'd had four, you could do two and two. So that bus bar system just allows people to make less runs to the inverters. Another thing worth mentioning, these have pre-charged resistors in them. These batteries, the uh, EG4 Life Power 4 batteries and the LLs. So the way you would utilize these, and the reason I'm mentioning it is I still see people probably on a weekly basis that have an issue with this. You would turn the breaker on here and then you would go over to the BMS side and engage that. As long as your breakers are on or closed at your inverter, you're ready to go. You go over to the BMS. And once the BMS boots up, you're good to go. So the pre-charge resistors have done their thing. Cool, I got plenty of sunshine. I'm charging at 90 amps on both batteries. So once I get these full, I'll incorporate them into the other pack. I got a little over 200 amps going through the new wires here and everything inside is cool as a cucumber. I'm gonna run a heat camera on it later when I can go a little higher with the current. For right now though, that's a good first test I added the grates back on the sides now that everything is done and it gives it a slick look there. And if you look inside, I didn't mention this, so I'm going to add this little bit here. The grates, the top grate there, uh, the bottom grate just always stays on, but the top grate, they've got these little screws here you can tighten into it. That way you don't have to put 
these are all the screws here that hold the top grates on. You don't have to put these back on if you don't want to. You can just tighten it with these here from the top. That way you don't have to use a screwdriver every time you want to take the top one off if you needed to for any reason. That's gonna about do it for this one, guys. I'm really happy with how things turned out. It was actually a fun project. I think these things look great, and I can't wait to get the third one over there. In the next video on these batteries, I'm gonna talk about the software and how these interact with the EG4 inverters, the 18K PV and the 6000 XP. And I have a bunch of other things coming up soon when I get time, so thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned.